Hello students, my name is Brennan Dunbar and I'm looking forward to working with you in this uh, Grade 12 Computer Science 30 course. Uh, this is a course that follows Computer Science 20, the introductory course. Computer Science 20 is a prerequisite for this class, so if you have not taken Computer Science 20, make sure you contact me so that we can sort of iron that out. In Computer Science 30, we are going to be extending our knowledge in Computer Science 20, extending our programming knowledge and understanding of information technology and programming and project work with technology. It is a reasonably challenging course, but if you are uh, like computers and if you enjoy the programming aspects of Computer Science 20, I really think you'll enjoy it. Uh, it's a passion area of mine, and I hope that, uh, that you feel the same way. Being a 30-level class and online, it is a bit more independently structured, so um, this course works best for students who are self-motivated and able to follow instructions, tutorials, videos, uh, in order to complete their learning as well as demonstrate their learning. That being said, I'm always available for assistance, and we will have weekly live coding sessions and drop-in help sessions to help you work through any of the problems that you may have. In this video, I am just going to give you a quick overview of our website and the Blackboard system, which is the virtual learning system that we're going to use. It's all online. It's basically just a website that you're going to use to access all of the learning materials and our live session meetings. It's sort of like a, a Zoom uh, meeting room, um, but it's embedded right inside our website, our class website, so it's uh, very easy to use, uh, as well as where you access the learning materials and submit your assignments. So without further ado, come along with me for a quick little tour through the Blackboard course just so that you know where to access all of the things I just referred to. I'm just going to uh, shift over to sharing my screen. And uh, I'm in a student preview mode, so this should be exactly what you see when you log into the course. I may actually redirect this page to the announcements page. It's always a good idea to start on the announcements page just to check to make sure that you haven't missed anything. Um, I don't post an announcement every day, but if I do post an announcement, it's likely about a project, an assignment, uh, a quiz, or something that you, that you really need to know about. So it's a good idea to start um, each day just by checking the announcements page. As we begin the course, I want everybody to start in the Start Here menu item, which is just going to have this introductory video. There's a form for a Google survey, and that survey is just to help me learn a little bit about you and the way that you learn and what you're interested in. Um, so that I can help you move forward in the class. So I'd appreciate it if you took a couple minutes to do that. As far as helpful information in this course, um, there are two, uh, you know, very important documents that I think that you need to look at. There is a course syllabus, which is basically just a course outline. It's very similar to what you would have received in paper if you uh, had been attending a physical school and taking the class in a physical school. Uh, it goes over what it is we're doing in the class, how you're being assessed in the class, expectations for the class, that sort of thing. And I've just got it posted on a web page. Um, if you want a downloadable version, I can provide one, but all the information is here and it just demonstrates uh, what it is that we're going to be learning and how you're going to be assessed in this, in this course. So that's something that uh, you should have a look at at the beginning of the course. The other thing, which is uh, probably more important, is a calendar. And my course calendar, or my pacing calendar, is intended to give you a day-by-day -day, um, structure for your workload. If you're taking the class in a semestered version, um, the expectation is that you're able to put in um, an hour per day, just as you would in a physical building, um, like a one-hour period. And uh, some of those days you'll be doing it independently. Some of those days we'll have live coding sessions. And some days we'll have drop-in, very informal drop-in, question and answer, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions where I can just help you through something and then you can go on with your work. So more information on that to follow. But uh, I always recommend that students print off the pacing calendar. So there's a picture version and there's also a PDF version here. And I always recommend that students print it off and uh, keep it near the area that you work in, just so you can check off the days and make sure that you're in the appropriate unit, working on the appropriate projects, and help you uh, organize your workload so that you are completing things in a timely manner, you're submitting them in a timely manner, and, uh, and that you don't, you don't fall behind. It is a reasonably challenging course, but, uh, but if you spend the hour a day and you ask questions when you have them, you'll do just fine. You'll note it is, it is color-coded. I've got uh, it just each module, basically units, each module is just in a different color to show you when things start and stop. And then in the background, I've got color coding to indicate when we're going to have live sessions and when we're going to have drop-in sessions. So anything that's white, so a white box, 
uh, indicates that's just an independent work period. You should be working for your hour or however long you need to um, per day. So that's the majority of your schedule. On Wednesdays at 2.30, so it's always going to be at 2.30. Wednesdays at 2.30, we will have live coding sessions where I will go through some more of the uh, concepts in more detail, perhaps provide some more examples, and uh, maybe a little hints and tips and tricks on the projects that you are going to be completing and submitting in the course. And then you'll notice that there are yellow boxes that are set for Friday, same time, 2.30. And those are attendance optional, and they're basically just the come and go help sessions. You log in with a question or two, and then we work through it, and then you can go on your way and continue, uh, continue on. Anything in orange is an assignment due date, so just to show you when projects are due and help keep you organized. So students have responded or given me feedback in the past that this is a really important docu for, document for them. It helps keep them accountable to themselves and helps them meet their learning goals. So I do recommend that you download that, or at least refer to it regularly. The majority of our learning is going to be done in the course materials section, and it's set up in a very linear, sequential, start at the top, work your way down to the bottom sort of environment. You'll notice that there are modules set up and numbered, and that's basically each of the units where we go through a new concept area. Module one is just introductory activities, and uh, so you just work through them one, two, three. Most of the thing, most of the stuff in the introductory uh, introductory model um, aren't going to take you very long. It's just an introduction to the class, signing you up for various websites. Um, we will be using some off, um, some out of division websites to help us with our coding. Um, Code HS um, is is one that we're going to use right away to help us uh, familiarize ourselves with Java a bit and the Java syntax and programming language. So. You'll need an account for that, so this shows you how to sign up for it using our class code and how the grading works in that system. How do you get help in the course? What are some exercises? And then I usually have a hints and solutions um, section at the bottom that uh, can either give you some hints to help you through a project or if it's something that we're doing together that's not in a, uh, you know, a, a marked piece, um, it'll give you a solution to show you, you know, what it is that you needed to work on in order to develop the skills to complete the assignments. So that's module one. If I just go back to my course materials and hit into module two, this is where um, you know the course really starts. We're you know we're we're focusing on content areas and certain programming um, concept uh, concepts, and we're just diving in a little uh, a little further. And um, you have some quizzes and you have some things that you have to submit. The first project is in here. Uh, it's called the multiples adder. If you click into the projects, just assignments, um, you'll note that. It gives you a description of what it is that you're supposed to complete or how your program is supposed to be structured and how it's supposed to work. I always give you sample output, which means if I enter the data that is indicated here, I should get this output. So it'll help you test your program to make sure that it's working properly. And when you've got it working properly, you submit it. Make sure you're saving everything on your local computer. Um, in fact, I recommend that you have a, a dedicated folder for your Computer Science 30 work so you can keep it all, or, all organized. And to submit things, you just go to Browse Local Files. You can submit as many files as you want. You can hold down the Control or Shift key and click as many things as you want to hand in. Or you can just do it one at a time. I'll just pick this document, for example. You click Open, and it adds it. You'll notice it adds the file name. This is attached to your assignment submission. If you make a mistake, you just click Do Not Attach. And you can do that as many times as you want. You go back into Browse Local Files and hand in a different file as well. So now you'll notice there's two files. You can type in some comments if there's something I need to know about your submission. You can type that in there, but that's optional. And then when you're ready to hand it in at the lower right corner, you'll notice you can save it as a draft or you can submit it. When you submit it, it should give you, um, it gave me this message because I'm a teacher, not a student, but when you submit it, it should give you a little purple message up at the top that shows you that the assignment has been successfully handed in. It tells you the exact date, the exact time. And I get a notification that you have handed in a project and that it needs to be assessed so I can give you feedback and a mark. So that's how you hand things in. And then if you go to My Grades, that's the area where you're going to see the completion for all your assignments. Um, if you hand something in, you're going to see a little icon here that says it's been handed in but not marked. Or if I've assessed it, it'll have um, a little check mark completion saying, um, that uh, it's been graded and then I've provided you some feedback. You'll be able to click into the assignment to see the feedback that I provided you. You're also going to see a grade for the assignment. So this is an area where you can sort of keep track of, of what you've done, what's been handed in, what's been marked, what hasn't been handed in, what's late, um, what's upcoming, etc. So that's a very, very handy area for students. 
your grades will be posted in here and the grades on Blackboard are generally kept up to date on uh, more or less a daily basis as I mark things. And I also post the marks once per week on Edsby for both you and for parents or guardians, anybody else who needs to see what it is we're doing, when we're doing it, and what's been submitted. So that will all be updated in Edsby every Friday afternoon. So if uh, parents or guardians want the most updated mark, check on Monday morning. It should be the most updated grade on Edsby. However, you being in Blackboard, you can more or less see what's, uh, what your grade is and what's going on anytime you want. The help section is, uh, is, just for, um, is just for Blackboard help. It's not help with the course. Um, any assistance that you need, uh, want with the course, please contact me via email. I'll have my contact information in here. Don't leave it. Um, if there's a question that's, uh, that's preventing you or, or uh, a concern that's preventing you from moving forward with a particular concept or assignment, send me an email right away. Uh, oftentimes, I can just send you a, an email back that will help you through the, through the rough patch, or we can, we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting time or the drop-in help sessions so that I can help you move forward. You don't want to fall behind, so... I encourage you to, to, to reach out if, if, uh, if you're having uh, trouble with something, and I will absolutely do my best to help you move forward. That's always the best way to proceed. Our live sessions, there's a big link over here for live sessions here, and it's, uh, it's quite simple. You just click on that, and you'll notice that there is a Computer Science 30 course room. If you click that link, it gives you a Join Course Room uh, button. Click that, and then it goes into a live room where um, I'm usually going to have my camera or my screen uh, on the on the, on the screen for you so you can see what I'm doing or see what I'm saying. There is the ability for you to turn cameras and microphones on or off, and there's also a chat window depending on how you wish to communicate. So that's how the live sessions are going to work. There's also a live session calendar. There's not going to be much in it because uh, our meeting times are going to be Wednesday for our live coding sessions, and for our come and go help sessions, it's always going to be Friday at 2.30. There's also uh, just a little uh, uh, picture here to show you what you need to do to find any of the recorded sessions. Uh, when I record a live uh, programming session or uh, a live teaching session, I will also post a link to that in the course materials so that it's in the section of the course um, related to that concept. So I think that should give you a fairly, uh, a fairly quick run through of uh, what the course is and how we're going to be moving through it. And uh, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to email me. I'm really looking forward to working with you in this course, and I hope to further help you develop your skills in this area. Have a great day. Good luck.